Um, so today, uh, welcome to the Stroke Association Victoria's online uh, conversations with the stroke survivor. Today, we are joined by Vicky, who is a member of the Bendigo Stroke Support Centre. And we're just going to have a chat with Vicky uh, about her experience of stroke. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us. So back in August 2020, um, in the height of COVID, Vicky was at home um, and she lives by herself and uh, she was asleep and she woke up to the ring of the phone and she went to ask the phone. And what happened next, Vicky? I could only say, um, and I tried valiantly to say something else, but I could only say, um, and I had to disconnect from the phone call um, because I could not communicate anything else other than saying, um, and so I, I, um, I, showered and got dressed all the times trying to say something else other than um and I when I um, was dressed I tried to read out loud I thought something else might trigger communication but I could not read out loud only sound I could make was um. And at that point, had did, did the word stroke enter your mind? Or did you think at all that it, it was change? a possibility? Yeah. Um, but I didn't know for sure. Yeah. Um, I, um, the, as far as I was concerned, there might be a number of things mm. that it was, and stroke was probably number one yeah. on the list of things that could produce the um, hum. Yeah. So, because your, your speech was affected, but did you have any other signs of stroke? You know, they talk about the, the fast, you know, the face through um, the arm. No, um, yeah. Um, but my thought processes was it took a long time. I before my stroke, I quite quickly assessed things and went um, went about my work um, quickly. Mm. But um, I took my I had to take my time. Mm. I tried to write mm. and um, my spelling, what it has always been um, not good, mm. but it was non-existent. Right. So you, you could not write either? No, I could not physically write. Yes. But I could operate my iPhone. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, so what happened next? Well, I tidied up my flat, right? So I did my housework. Organised. <laughs> and, and all the while thinking what I should do. Mm. And I didn't want to drive myself up to the hospital because Bendigo has limited um, car parks. Mm. And I didn't, and if I had to stay long in hospital. I didn't want someone having to pick up my car and drive back to my units. So at this point, as uh, working for the Stroke Association, I would say for anybody listening, uh, it would be probably the best thing to do, call an ambulance, but this is makes for a very interesting story. Yes, and you can't, uh, as I've found out, yes. you can call the ambulance, and if you can't speak or are trying to speak, right. they will send out an ambulance to your location. Well, that's good to know anyway, if anybody's in that situation in the future, which we hope that they're not. Yeah. And I was a frequent user of 
um, taxis. Mm. So I knew that if I phoned up the taxi, I ha would have to um, talk to an operator mm. or um, if I did the automatic um, booking system, I would have to talk to the taxi driver. Yes. And obviously I couldn't do that. Mm. So I went online and I registered for the taxi and I, um, when I registered there and I could book online for a taxi and in the comments section I wrote, I could not speak. Right. So the taxi arrived, you did not speak to the taxi driver, but you ended up in at the emergency, but this was the height of COVID. So there was no entry into the emergency department like there is normally. So Vicky uh, came to the front door and she came across a very good security guard who was doing his job very well. But he was frustrated with me because I, I answered all these questions with um, and that wasn't what he wanted yet. Well, he was probably very confused uh, that uh, you were just saying um instead of actually speaking. Well, and I, I looked all right. Yes. yes. I looked fine. I just couldn't communicate to him. Yeah. I only could say um. Yes. And um, then I hit upon um, my second idea. Yes. Um, I had my mobile phone and I opened up the the notes app and I typed in and it was it took a long time I'm a typist so I should be able to type out I cannot speak mm. today um quickly but it took about you know three or four minutes yes. for me to type out I cannot speak today, today. and turn the um mobile phone to him so yeah. he could read it. And then he got that I cannot speak. Yes. And then he allowed me to go to the reception of emergency and they got it straight away. So once you were inside emergency, seeing the health professionals, they understood straight away that there was an issue. Yes. And you were whisked away. Because the security guard is a security guard. They have no medical training. No. So, uh, but it makes for an interesting story. Uh, so, once you were in hospital uh, and they diagnosed you, you received a scan. Yes. Um, and what type of scan? Um, they, um, uh, they told me they thought it was a stroke yes. and they tried to. Um, um, draw blood yes. for me. Um, that was a bit difficult. Yeah. First with the bruises. Yes. Um, and they succeeded in that eventually. And then they took me off for a scan. Yes. And in which then they could see that he suffered a scan. Yes. And I answered all their questions um, via notes or nodding or Yes, so um, you were able to communicate. Yes, uh, non-verbally. Yes, and my um, my face is very expressive. So mm. if they went down the wrong track, I I soon brought them up. Yes. because no, that's not right. <laughs> yes, I could I couldn't say no, that's not right, but I could mine. <laughs> yes. Uh, so with the, the diagnosis of a stroke and in your the speech part of your brain, um, and you were saying it was quite targeted. targeted area, which was just affecting your speech, which is why it was really just your speech. But was there anything else that had been affected as well? Um, um, I could not construct sentences. Mm -hmm. So when I was trying to um, type out um, my answers, they were 
um, dot points. <laughs> they were um, the important words only. I could not construct a sentence. Um, and when I went back and saw what I typed, um, it made sense that they had trouble deciphering right. what I was trying to say. Yes. Um, um, and the next day um, I ordered food and so I was hungry, um, but as soon as the food arrived and they took off the posh, the smell of the food made me nauseous. Right. And I tried to eat, so I took a, one or two mouthfuls and I um, vomited yes. them up. Right, so, they, so it had affected your, your taste. Your, um, your smell your and taste. taste. Right. Um, now, just back to your speech being affected and your, your writing. Uh, previously being a specialist librarian for government, education and, and medical industries. And being an avid reader, uh, having your language and your communication affected must have been massive for you. It was very concerning. Yeah. Um, because um, that is the way I communicate mm. through my words. Mm. And I love information. I'm, I love finding out new information mm. and I love films and books and they are my hobbies. Yes. And I could see my world going in. Yes. And I didn't know what the future held. Yes. Yeah. And that was concerning. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you then uh, spent some time in hospital uh, and so how many hours um, did you spend in hospital? I couldn't eat for three weeks yes. and I spent um, five weeks in hospital. No one could visit me because during COVID, COVID. Yes. Um, and I was in a poor bed ward so I had company mm -hmm. um, as well as the nurses and daily uh, um, Monday to Friday I had an hour with the speech therapist yes. who gave me homework and I was very diligent um, doing the homework because yes. I wanted to speak yes but the speech therapist told me that I had an advanced vocabulary mm. that I was trying to speak mm. and I had to learn to simplify my language to get out and communicate with people. Yes. Did you find that frustrating? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I... I know what I want to say, yes, but sometimes I can't get out the word, yes, um, and so I have to um, think about, uh, think of another word to replace that, yes, and that is um, that isn't natural for me, yes, and it's probably a bonus being such a avid reader and probably having such a wide vocabulary. I can't even say in that vocabulary that you have lots of words to choose from to yes. replace them with. So that probably has been a bonus. Um, so at what point did you start to get your speech back, your words, being able to form sentences? Um, we had to um, concentrate on a few sounds mm. like p, 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 mm -hmm. p, Ba, ba. Mm. Um, and um, about week two, I could uh, communicate very um, simply yes. what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yes, I've worked um, at gaining my um, words back. Yes. But it's still um, very, I have to process what I want to say mm -hmm. and then I have to um, say it. So if there's a disconnect. What I want to say is um, there um, instantly, mm -hmm. but I have to, there's a delay in how I say it. Yes. So your goals were one, to get your speech back and be able to speak using the words that you wished to, but what were some of the other goals that you? Well, in hospital eating. <laughs> yes. I was concerned about my <laughs> um, output. <laughs> yes. But I said, if I, if no food is going in, then no output is coming yes. out. Yes. So eating. Um, and expanding what I ate. So yes. I, it was step by step mm. introducing um, taste mm -hmm. um, so that I could eat. Yes. Um, they were concerned about me walking, but I, I, um, I am a next netballer, so I I say I have no knees. So yes. <laughs> so you were never much of a walker anyway. Yes. That's what you were saying. Yes. But I um, in hospital um, when I wasn't tired, I went to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, they had gym for three days a week, so I tried to attend there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes being tired um, would stop me from going to the gym, but never stop me from going to speech therapy. And that was my um, number one goal. Yes. Uh, and the fatigue, the tiredness that you talk about, has that continued on since your stroke? Yes. Yes. Um, um, and it... And it's difficult to know um, because you have lockdown with COVID mm -hmm. how much more active you could have been mm -hmm. if you weren't staying at home with COVID. Yes. But I find two or three hours um, with people is more than enough. Yes. I want to... I have to rest after that. Yes. Um, your so once you discharged and sent back home uh, with your speech therapy, um, you then sought out the stroke uh, sought out the stroke uh, centre here in Bendigo. And, and what I think we received a referral from for you actually, and so we made contact and you came in. And what sort of activities are you doing here at the centre? Well, I attended the peer support group yes. first, mm -hmm. and that was very good to be able to talk to people who have had stroke. Mm -hmm. And a number of them have had their stroke, you know, five or 10 or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was very interesting mm. listening to them um, and they had strategies that I could employ and experiences mm. that I could, um, if I know about them, I can um, have strategies in my own life. And because you do live by yourself, Obviously, it's that practicing the communication with the speaking. That and with COVID, that there aren't many opportunities mm -hmm. because when I first um, was out of hospital, I couldn't even go to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. I had to order online for my groceries. So mm -hmm. and uh, I had didn't I wasn't able to drive because. Three months 
um, post um, stroke, you can't drive. Mm. And our goal after three months was getting back my driver's license for that independence. Yes, yes. And for you, that would be massive because you, there's nobody else at home for you to rely on. I would have to think about my living conditions mm. if I couldn't drive, yes. So mm. it was good that I could um, get back my driving license. Yeah. And then you also started coming along to the communication group that we have here. Yes, and I, that's my priority yes. because um, having to prepare a talk and giving that talk is good exercise yes. for me to communicate for my communication skills. Yes. Practicing it within an environment where everybody's understanding in a similar boat. And we all have different, have had di different strokes mm. and the stroke has affected us differently mm. and our communication differently. So we all, are all supportive um, of each other gaining um, communication um, fluency. Yes. 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 And it, it wasn't until you came along to one of our, we have a uh, sink for a family group there in Bendigo. Well, we, we, we've had one and then we had to close it because of COVID, but we hope to reopen it next year um, or rerun it. But so uh, Vicky came along to our first sink for recovery group and had the realisation that I can't sing. <laughs> and Vicky used to be able to sing. Or yes. read read um, songs, and I could um, I could read music, and I could sing a tune, even if I hadn't experienced that song before. But during that group, I couldn't read the words and process the words and attach a tune to them. Mm -hmm. and speak or yes. sing out loud. Yes. And that was very frustrating yes. but illuminating. Yes. Because you don't know what you can't do until you go to do it. Yes. So I hadn't realised that um, I had tuned my um, car into classic FM mm -hmm. because Classical music calms me down, soothes me, yes. soothes me yes. and I didn't want to listen to um, pop music or mm. other music. Mm. I had to my uh, before the stroke. Mm. I had Triple J yeah, on my radio. So your music tastes have changed well, since your stroke. No. I, I always like. Classical, classical music, yes. and I always um, found it soothing, yes. but it's um, it's number one. Yes. Whereas before, other music, country music, jazz, blues, soul music, um, would um, I found pleasant, but I like the classical music. Okay. Yes, and um, well, I remember you coming in, and one of there was a, a massive goal that you achieved for yourself. And um, you want to explain what you managed to do? Yes, I managed to read my first novel post my stroke. So that was a very large goal because yes. I had I always. When I started reading a book, I would always finish it. But since my got stroke, I had a number of books that I started and um, I put down because I, I, I wasn't interested in finishing. So um, 
before my stroke, I read 30 to 40 books a year. Mm. And it took about six months for me to sit down and read my first novel. Yes. And I read six novels this year. Well done. <laughs> That's fantastic. And um, and it just comes to show that everybody um, has different strokes and have different goals to achieve as well. So for you, that, that was a massive goal. Um, and are there any other coping me mechanisms that you've put in place to, apart from music, you've changed um, to listening to classical music. Are there any other coping mechanisms that you've put in place since you stroke to help you uh, cope with your situation? Um, I'm trying to challenge myself. Yes. But if I feel fatigued and tired, I um, I give myself permission to rest yes. and re um, and recover from that season. Yes. So I I recently um, had a casual job at Latrobe University mm -hmm. um, as a patient, a stroke patient. Yes. Um, and I, um, I was a patient for two students and they asked me questions mm -hmm. and um, there were four sessions in a day and the next day I was very tired yes. and I um, gave myself permission to rest. Yes. And and I was not more tired than I thought I was because yeah. I was coming here to the Bendigo Stroke Centre, but I realised that we had, it was two hours, not four hours or six hours. Yes. So um, um, I'm determined person, yes. so I did the... Uh, six hours at Latrobe, but I um, had to recover from the exhaustion yes. of having to talk to so many different people. Yes, and in, in a strange environment, I'm sure, as well. Yes, but um, I like to talk to people at the level they are talking to me. Yes. So... Um, and and the style that they want to hear. Yep. So it um, uh, is uh, a great strain yes. on my brain power, yes. my processing of the language. Yes. Well, um, it's amazing that how well you've done this is great to go from not being able to speak to speaking today to us and we want to thank you very much for sharing your story and with a hope to help everyone out there who has had a stroke with hearing um, Vicky's experience uh, and taking there may be parts of it that um, there may be similarities or just that shared experience that um, you know strokes can be quite different but um, similarities run through them uh, so thank you very much and we'll see you at the next session of Conversations with the Stroke Survivor. Thank you.